Hello there, my name is Ben Woodruff, and uh, this is a presentation on the Falcons of North America. I put this PowerPoint together uh, and gave a presentation at the Great Salt Lake Bird Festival in northern Utah. They hold it every May. If you're in Utah or near Utah, check it out. It's a really cool event. Uh, but I wanted to do a presentation about the Falcons of North America, uh, about identifying them, and just helping people be aware of the species that we have. And um, so I, I wanted to share this uh, online and hope that I can get some of that information out and get some of that appreciation for our wildlife. Uh, I myself am a falconer and a wildlife educator. I've been passionate about falcons since second grade. I, have, I fell in love with them in second grade and I've never looked back. I absolutely love falcons and love to teach about them and share them with people. So our North American falcons, we have a number of species. And this is what I'm referring to when I say North America. So Canada, the United States, Mexico, including the Yucatan Peninsula. There's a lot of falcon species we have, and we're going to see them. The first is the American kestrel, which is our smallest falcon species in North America. The next is the Eurasian kestrel, which people don't think of as being American, uh, but they do range into North America, and we'll talk about them in a minute. The bat falcon is a tropical species, a neotropical species. The merlin falcon. The oplomato falcon. The prairie falcon. The orange-breasted falcon, which is another neotropical species. The peregrine falcon, which uh, is arguably the most famous falcon species. And the jeer falcon, which is the largest species of falcon, not only in North America, but in the entire world. So let's start with American kestrels. American kestrels, um, they, are, they are sexually dimorphic. So the males and females are not only different size, but different colors. The females are red uh, with black bars. You can see the black bars on the back and all over the wings. And their tail is barred from the top to the bottom, all the way up and down. On females, the subterminal band, which is the, the very bottom band, is very wide after the first year. So typically the first year it's a skinny band and then it thickens. That's one of the ways to usually be able to tell correctly if it's, a fee, if it's an adult. Now, now the male American kestrel, they have blue wings with black spots and they have these from their very first year. And the blue on the head is often more pronounced than on females. Not always the case, but typically it is. If you look up top, you can barely see a little bit of red on the top of his head, but usually they have more blue on their head than the female. Now the tails on the male American kestrels actually can vary quite a bit. Um, but you can only notice that when the tail is spread out. So if you were holding a bird, if you were banding a bird, uh, preparing to release it, then you might be able to see this. So here's some examples of that. If you look at this tail, uh, there's these additional uh, suggestions of, of an additional black bar with the two white outer tail feathers. This one, uh, those, those, that center tail feather, the deck feather, you can see it doesn't, it's, it's got a lot more red. And then this tail has a lot more white and even blue in it. But in the field, um, the tail looks fairly predictable because when the entire tail is all closed up, then you can only basically see the two top feathers, which are almost always red with a black band and a tiny white tip. Now, both genders have double malar stripes. Uh, they're the only North American falcons to have this. The malar stripes, uh, that's the second malar stripe that is unique with kestrels. And that's the front malar stripe that basically all falcons have. Now, many individuals have uh, eye spots or third or false malar stripes. And um, we can see that right here on this female American kestrel. And uh, that, again, is a unique thing to American kestrels and you can also see it on this individual where it, it sort of looks like an eye spot there's there's one on each side so from behind it it sort of resembles eye spots 
Now, the interesting thing about American kestrels is as you travel further south, uh, they start to, they separate, they, they get lighter and darker. So if you're viewing, again, I did this presentation for people in Utah. We have in Utah pretty standard, you know, quote unquote standard looking kestrels. Uh, but as you get further south, um, down into Arizona, New Mexico, uh, Texas, and then into Mexico and the Yucatan, they get lighter and darker, like this uh, light female on the left and up top this dark male on the right. Here's another very dark male where he's as red on his chest as he is on the back. And this incredibly dark female, same thing, almost as dark on the chest uh, as the back. And her ba the black bars on her back are darker than most kestrels in the United States. And her second malar stripe is whiter and her head is almost completely dark. Here's another very dark female. And here's a dark male. Again, look at his uh, second malar stripe, how much wider that is on the head. Here's a very light female. There's no streaking at all on her chest. And her front malar stripe is so thin it's almost non-existent. The same thing with this female eating a cricket or a, or a, or a cockroach here. The front malar stripe is almost non-existent. Here's a very light male. Again, that front malar stripe almost non-existent. And uh, this one, although arguably this could be a, a leukistic or or very uh, light phase that just happens to not have any melanin darkening it, but it does. It, this this could just be a very light male. So things to remember if you're trying to identify a kestrel. First of all, they're very buoyant for their size. They have very little weight holding down their wings, so they're buoyant, very similar to a butterfly. They can hover in one place, so if you see a falcon hovering, you pretty much automatically know it's a kestrel. The other falcon species do not hover. And they bob their tail uh, while they are perching. They often bob their tail up and down and up and down. No other North American falcon species does this. And what is it hunting? Uh, if you're in the United States and you see a falcon hunting insects or mice, it, it very likely is a kestrel. Most of the other falcon species tend to hunt birds. It's not always the case, but it's a good general rule. Now, this is a very light individual I just wanted to throw in there. This is a bird from Utah, and this was a, a rehabilitation bird that then came in and was uh, used in educational programs. This was at an educational event. You can see on the left of that lighter kestrel, there's a very normal looking kestrel female. And then the one in the center is very light. This is very unusual to have them that color. Okay, Eurasian. This is the end of part one of this PowerPoint. Check out part two to see the rest of this presentation.